Welcome to Board Ghost, a story broadcast with games as the engine. If living is a highway, then heaven is a bus stop. Been waiting for a minute there, but has it been forever? We believe you're out there, hungry for stories for shared experiences. We can't see you, can't hear you, yet we will play for you. This night's offering is Fiasco. We're continuing our adventure in New York 1913, the playset written by Jason Morningstar. I'm one of your humble players, John Holt. With me is... Ken Breeze. And joining us again, our guest and wonderful fun player to play with... Lisa Renke. Yay! All right. Where we left off, my character, Shocky Mash... The grifter, low-life gambler, oh, <laughs> was being propositioned and getting tied up in in a in a new machination with with his lover, uh, Heinrich or Hank Kasselschaft, who is uh, a banker by day, a very stand-up citizen here in the New York of nineteen. 19- 13. Um, he's also a closet gay man uh, who uh, he's married. What's been going on? He has some trouble in his, his marriage, uh, though he, he's a good guy at heart. Uh, his, his sort of world has been shifting as uh, uh, new ideas of politics, identity politics uh, come into his life. And he basically has decided to say fuck you to the system and steal something from the bank that he works at in the hopes that it will make him and the people that he loves fabulously rich. And his wife is named... Elizabeth Lizzie Kasselshaft. She's uh, in cahoots with both of these gentlemen uh, in this scheme. We currently have a key to the deposit box at the bank that Hank works in, and we are going to break in somehow. Uh, presumably. Also, Elizabeth has uh, is definitely one of the new women. She's uh, picked up the French word feminist lately. She is uh, also a member of the Wobblies, all because uh, her her friends all died in the Triangle Shirtwaist Fire. And she also is starting to suspect that something is going on between Shocky Mash and Hank, but she's not. She hasn't found proof. As Elizabeth, Lizzie mentioned, we have a key to the deposit box in play. We also have Hadley Hall, a location in play, which is a Presbyterian soup kitchen effectively by day and a Wobblies uh, union uh, l- organized labor, super labor uh, group slash anarchists by night. And uh, one need that's in the mix is the the need to discover the dark truth about what happened to on the SS Tuscania. We're, we're getting better at saying Tuscania. We are Tuscania. 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 Yeah, Remember, yeah. it is an Italian word. <laughs> and we know uh, that uh, Shocky Mash has met the captain of the SS Tuscania before. What Hank, was his name? His name was Captain Kamal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Captain come all. Come all. Uh-huh. Come one, come, come all. Come one, come all. Um, <laughs> but Hank swear he saw Captain Kamal at the Chase Bank after the news reported. After the news reported that the SS Tuscania had had, had some trouble. Yeah. Had some trouble, some deaths. And Shockey, always looking for opportunity, had already kind of puzzled out that maybe there's a way to make some money off of this. Indeed. Off of that. And sort so of we're hoping that that money is path. inside the safety deposit box that we have a key for. All right. And we got to get it. And we also have two tilts on the table. Yeah. They are failure. You thought it was taken care of, but it wasn't. And innocence. Love rears its ugly head. Any of us can tap into any either of those tilts at any time during any scene to uh, up the ante, as it were. Now we begin Act 2, Fiasco, <laughs> New York, 1913. It 
it's night. It's we've left the hall. Yes. Okay. And we're back in your guys' tenement house. All right. The floorboard nook hole is open. Oh. Now, because we've pulled a, some grease paper out of there, and you've drawn us a crude map of this. Is, it seems like this is a map that we've drawn a few times over. This is it's much later. We've been planning and planning yes. how, how we're going to do this. So we we have a map of the bank and diagrams, and we have chess pieces to represent each one of us and the guards, and we're going to try to figure out how this is going to work. And Shockey's pretty sure he can pull off being like Captain Kamal. They're going to have to dip into their kitty to get the get the Costume, uniform. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they may have to bribe like a, a what is the guy who works on a ship and maintains the quartermaster yeah the quartermaster the bosun yeah longshoreman yeah they'll have to beat up a longshoreman and bribe a quartermaster there to get the to get a uniform to to steal some captain's garb or maybe just you know go to a laundromat and bribe a laundromat person mm-hmm. though they probably do laundry on the ship anyway. yeah yeah possibly anyhow enough about 1913 laundry <laughs> <laughs> so interesting. So he, we're figuring out this plan, and pretty sure he can pull it off. The the look, but it seems it seems like this is gonna he's gonna be on the front line, and he's not super comfortable about being exposed like this. Like he's gonna be walking into. I'm guys. I'm gonna be walking right into the middle of this big old bank. I mean, you Hank, you know this stuff better than us. Like this is your world. I will be there with you every step of the way. I will guide you in. It'll be I mean, a, that's going to be suspicious. You'll be tied to this whole thing. Well, perhaps it's better if I am not so suspicious. What if I were to find a way for you to perhaps leave very easily if you needed to? Hmm. I say, though, that the disguise only needs to get you in, not to get you out. I will help get you out. All right. You think we can pull this off, though? Oh, yes. I, we have to. I feel like uh, why why uh, why does why wouldn't it work the whole way through? Why doesn't he have to come out? I mean, why don't I just stand by uh, in case there is trouble, and then I'll make a commotion of some sorts in the in the lobby to just back people away from you. All right, then I will give you a signal if you need to make a commotion. W- okay, what's your signal, honey, uh, sweetie pie? I think I will change the flower in my lapel from one side to the other. You're so smart. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I love that it. works. Yeah. I mean, we're talking like security with with like guns here, right? Yes. That's that's why I thought you might want to run out the side once you have the box. No. Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I still not. I'm not sure, guys. I think you should be. I think you should be positive. You look exactly like Captain Kamal right now. I, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I did your hair up real nice. I know, and the and you know, the once I got the uniform from uh, McSlurry over there, we'll be fine. But I mean, you've got the key; it, it's legitimate. What else? To, he doesn't need to. Just don't talk much. All right. Yeah, I just I'm ner- You know, it's this is uh this is not the kind of this is not the kind of like game we like to play. You know, maybe you should go go in together then. Yeah, but they know. I mean, they know Lizzie. Why would she be there? Oh, they yeah. do. I, go, I give you lunch. I give oh, you tuna yes. lunches quite infrequently. <laughs> oh, yes. It's only when the tuna comes in. Ah, oh, guys, I don't know. I don't know. And I think I'll stop my scene there, and you guys decide whether it will go poorly or well for Shockey. Yeah, yeah. It goes great for you. What are you yeah. talking about? Okay. Yeah. You're... All right. Um, so going great. <laughs> what will that be? Um it's to to assuage my you guys yes. you guys acquiesce to a couple of things that I like I definitely want to spend a little bit more money and get a gun yeah okay to yeah. bring in to the yeah. to the bank sure and at first you guys were no 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 this guns are dangerous that you might kill someone no but it's to protect me you know God, Chucky, we've talked about this before but you know like look I won't hurt nobody I'll just wave it around. And it'll spook them. And then I can get out. I can just, like, ghost, you know? Like, get out of Dodge. <sighs> Fine. All right. So, yeah, like, all right. So, a costume and a gun. <sighs> and the map. So, you know where you can go. Yeah. Um, Swain. Swain down at the hall could probably hook me up with a gun. He might have some bombs, too. Bombs? What are you talking about? It's crazy. Yeah. 
Yeah, I guess you're right. Well, you know, you never know. You've been hearing too much u- news out of Europe. Yeah. All right, I'm in though. But you know, as long as I, as long as I just have like some backup, some insurance, I'm not going in there like naked. Insurance? What kind of insurance? Well, you know, a piece like. Oh, uh, the gun. Yeah. All right. So he's he's down. He's down for it. Flash forward to before the event, before the caper takes place, before you attempt to smooth talk your way into the safety deposit room and get the safety deposit box with the key. You've left with the money to go get the things that you'd been talking about. And I'm with Lizzie in our tenement apartment. What time is it? I think it's pretty late at night at this okay, point. Okay, great. I think it's like super late at night. We've been planning. We've been discussing things. We're sort of cracked out and tired. I look at her and I say, this will, this will change everything. I, I feel like I don't know what tomorrow will bring, and this scares me. But if this works, we'll be on easy street. Will we, though? It seems like an awful big risk that we're taking. We've got a nice tenement. We've got friends. We've got family. If this goes wrong, we lose it all. If this goes wrong, then we must be willing to let Shocky go. What are you suggesting? Just make a hightail it out of there without him? We could. <sighs> this is getting deep. I don't want to. I don't want to hurt anyone. We're not. I mean, we're not hurting anyone. We're hurting a dead guy. I do not wish to see anyone hurt either. But this cannot come back to us and jeopardize our future. So you're asking me to put it on the line for you. And then you're asking me to put Shaki's life on the line for you. What are you going to give me? And with that, he starts taking off his clothes. (laughs) (laughs) And looks her in the eye and says, we are most important in this. Our future. This can be the boost up we need to get out of this tenement. Yeah, it'd be nice to not have to sleep on the roofs when it's so hot here in the summer. Just inhale smoke every day from inky exhaust pipes of coal-fired plants. I have to walk down six flights of stairs and go outside in the snow just to use the outhouse. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I've had near misses with chamber pots. The outhouse. I want to get a car. I want to live somewhere else. Still, it seems like a lot to risk. And I think that's where we'll cut the scene. It does not it go does well not go. for Hank. So what that means is that as he's having this conversation with Lizzie. As he takes his clothes off. As he's taking his clothes off. I mean, they make love. But she can definitely tell that he's holding something back. And she has a sinking feeling in her stomach that it might not be Hank who is, or excuse me, it's not. it might not be Shockey who is let go, but instead herself by her husband. That he might care about Shockey more and seek to keep him out of trouble. It's uh, the next day. I know that Shockey has the gun, and I know that Hank is going over to his his tenement to draw up the plans again to make some uh, adjustments. To he went back to the bank and he he looked it over and he found some mistakes and he's gonna go fix it with Shockey. But Elizabeth doesn't be- doesn't believe it. So. She she uh, tails behind her husband through the streets of New York, past all the carts selling all the goods, weaving through the streets past cars and horses, muck and mud. A lot of horse shit. It's a lot of horse shit. Mm-hmm. You see Hank enter the building, and you see Lizzie sneak in behind him. You see Hank enter the, the door of Shank Shockey's apartment. Lizzie just puts her ear to the door, and she's hearing... A discussion about guns? Sure. Hank comes yes. in and says, uh, hey, Hamhawk, good to see you. And sort of goes uh, to give you uh, uh, like a hug, I guess. Yeah. Shocky, like, he's a he's a wrestler. He, like, roughhouses. So he's, he kind of grabs you and tries to throw you down. He's like, oh, you lug. What are you doing? Toby, I came to make sure that everything was okay. The the plan needs a few adjustments we need to talk about. Yeah, you gotta you should see how shiny these freaking shoes are. Like, <laughs> oh my god. Like the captain, like man, I've never seen shoes these clean. Once we have the money, the clothes we'll be able to buy. I will see you dressed so well. You see Elizabeth like she's not hearing enough information. <laughs> so she actually uh knocks on a neighbor's door and this is all in silence and she gets the neighbor to let her into his or her apartment and you see her climb all across <laughs> along the ledge. <laughs> so and you outside. see like her 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 like little head just parking into peeking 
peeking the, into like the off the fire escape. yeah <laughs> off the fire escape into the other apartment that you live in and that Chucky lives in and the glass is like really dirty and kind of cracked and so you're still it's still not super it's distinct, not super clear but it's also cracked enough that like more sound is coming through too because as you can hear better and you hear her gasp because I I have my gun out oh yes <laughs> so um we're talking about guns like oh man look at the size of the oh your gun is so hard and metallic <laughs> So yes. we start flirting. Oh no, we aren't flirters. We just like we're hot and heavy. Yeah, like well, it's I mean, we passion. start getting playful. Yeah, yeah. So it's like you know, we're we're in flagrante. Oh, definitely. Uh, I mean, I think that's one of the reasons that Hank is drawn to Shocky is his sort of roundness, his sort of girth as yeah. it were. Yeah, just like it's a very like a roly poly. Uh, yeah, it's very comforting. <laughs> it's very comfortable, uh, yeah. sensual, and uh, yeah, I think that it sounds like they uh, do. Yeah, start they're, to make love they're in on the floor. Coitus, and, and so you, you're talking seeing... about, and so they they are they are in coitus. And yeah. she uh, opens the window, sticks her hand in, grabs the gun, Ooh. and sneaks out. All right. All well, right. Uh, or tries to sneak out. Oh, All right. that's right. Yeah, that's what she's trying to do. I think it goes positively for you. Yes. Okay. Oh. I do successfully. Yeah. I'm outside the bank, puffing my chest. My hair is done up, a little different. Lizzie did a really good job. I'm in my captain's garb. My shoes are real shiny. There's a whole lot less dirt on me, and I'm not very comfortable with that. <laughs> and I, for some reason, couldn't find the gun this morning. So I grabbed a sap and a knife that I had, and uh, this will go. I know the plan. And I strut into the bank, and I say, Excuse me, sir. I am a Captain Kamal. <laughs> uh, where is the nearest teller? I need to look at something in the back. The teller says, come on, in the back? What are you talking about, sir? Oh, yeah, no, uh, I got my key, you know. Ah, yes, of, of course, sir, you wish to see your safety deposit box. Bam, bingo. If you will follow this gentleman and sort of calls over uh, uh, sort of a, a teller, as it were, to take you into the back. All right, and as I pass Hank, who's working at his position, mm -hmm. wink. <laughs> Uh, Hank uh, it just pays no attention to Shockey whatsoever. He does have a blue carnation sticking out of one of the lapels, his left lapel, as it were, of his business suit that he is in. But other than that, he sort of like fluffs the flower, but uh, otherwise pays no mind to Shockey. Elizabeth Shockey. walks in and she starts filling out some forms. And she has a noticeably a handbag with her this time. Shockey's being escorted back to the back through the bank. Yep. How's it going to go for him? Poorly. <laughs> it goes quite poorly for him, unfortunately. All right. So Shockey, well, I walk right past the bank manager mm -hmm. and I'm being escorted past. And he's like, he grabs the person who, who's escorting me and I continue forward. I, yeah. I'm just, I know the floor plan. I know yeah. exactly where I'm going. I don't need an escort. And he's, he's saying... What does he say to to the manager? Or the, what does the manager say to the escort? Who is that man? And the the escort says, well, he's, he claimed to be Captain Kamal. Captain Kamal? Captain Kamal is not supposed to be here. I don't know, sir. I mean, where, he, did, where did he go? I mean, he had a safety deposit box key. Find him. <laughs> um, so Shockey hears someone say sharply, find him, and is like, oh, jeez, and starts huffing like, waddling quickly All right. as, as his round body will propel him to the safety deposit box room. All right. Heinrich Kusselschaft is with Shockey Mash. We are flashing forward after Hank was able to sneak up and stop both the bank manager and the escort from interfering with Shockey's mission by using his own sap that he has brought this day to work, to knock them out. He is taking first steps, acting on violence, but going to the safe deposit box room with Shockey, they are able to pull out the box and Shockey has it underneath his arm as they're basically running out of the bank now together. 
they come back to the main bank lobby. That's when Hank says to Shockey, I have to stay, but you keep going. And as they begin to part ways, I guess that's that's when when Hank notices that that Lizzie is there, that he didn't really notice in all the excitement and confusion before that she's actually shown up. He quick walks over to her location. I did not ask you to bring me lunch today. What are you doing here? I know what's going down. I came here to help. Uh, very good. Uh, it is good to see you. And he gives you, or Lizzie rather, uh, a sort of an awkward uh, hug. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, and sh- she pushes your hands away. Okay. It's at that point that Shocky walks up and is like, guys, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Lizzie, what are you doing here? This isn't part of the plan. I guess it's at, at that point that that failure, you thought it was taken care of, but it wasn't. And the bank manager sta- staggers out from behind the scenes and yells, Robbery! And how does the scene end for me? Poorly. Poorly. Yeah, very poorly. poorly. Awesome. The bank manager uh, points directly at Hank. There, there he is! Implicating Hank in a robbery. Well, I never. <laughs> I am offended as a captain of the sea. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we, we watched them jump in a cab cart and hightail it down south. They successfully escape the bank. Okay. And they, But they know they can't go back to their apartment because the you're implicated and so everything in the apartment's lost Mm -hmm. uh we can't return there it's too dangerous so we go you see them uh get to the ferry terminal get on the staten island ferry and they go up to the the front of the ship uh with the air whipping through their hair a storm cloud is rolling above them the waves are splashing against the ship very hardly you see Sm- Shaki open the safety deposit box. Inside, all there is is a, a death certificate for Captain Kamal. Kamal. Okay. There was no money. There's no money. There's no money. There's no, no fortune. No insurance. It bonds. Just, and looking closer on it, you see that the the cause of death was mutiny. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so <laughs> killed, by his, ki- killed by his crew. Killed by his crew. Um, okay. a shot and a sh- a more scientifically, it's a shot through the head. Shot through the head by the crew. By the crew. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right. And um, Lizzie steps back and she's like, "We've done this all for this. This is this is what we've we've destroyed our lives for." I I swear it was him. I I, I knew it. it. It had to have been him. Oh jeez. I mean, if if I can look dead on like him, like anybody could be mistaken for this guy. But don't don't beat yourself up about it, you know. Beat myself up, I my life is over. I, I mean, you made some bad choices. You're gonna have to move on. Both of you made some bad choices. Lizzie reaches into her purse and she pulls out the gun. What? And she, she like she points it at Hank and she points it at Shocky. What are you doing? What are you doing? Whoa! <laughs> hey, where'd you get my gun from? I stole it from your apartment. When you were doing the immoral acts with my husband. And then the gun looks directly at you. Or is pointed directly at you. Hey, listen, Lizzie. I don't know what you saw. I I mean, I don't know what you're talking about. The waves crash against the ship. Hank has gone (laughs) super white at this point. uh, And is just sort of murmuring, my future. Our future. All right. You too. You've got a decision to make right now. You, you either, you either, you either give me a divorce, which I think, or you leave together. Uh, you give me a divorce and you leave together on Staten Island, and I'll make my own ways. Or I'll just. You said you wanted to die, and I'll just kill you right now. Yeah, I guess it, it goes poorly for Lizzie. <laughs> how, does right. that, how does that manifest? Great. <laughs> yeah, how Great. does that manifest? And uh, all right, so so. I mean, what, I, what, what, what's what, your answer? The answer is, is that Hank throws himself at Lily. Like, he goes Lizzie. full on violent. Lizzie. Uh, Lizzie. Yeah. Okay. He, you're trying to. Ah! He goes for the gun. Great. You go for the gun. Mm-hmm. You knock it out of my hand. The okay. ship, the waves crash against the ship, and Lizzie falls overboard. Ah! Oh, no. Ah! <laughs> 
And uh, yeah, I'm yelling, no! Ah! Like I'm just sort of losing it at this point. I'm just like, ah! My entire identity has been sort of revealed or secret identity has been revealed. I'm, But I'm losing someone who I do care about, who I've been married to, who is sort of the only, <laughs> effectively has my, been my beard, has been keeping me sort of, you know, from being as improper as I accuse everyone else of being. My sort of, my world is unraveling to some degree at this point. And that's sort of where I am on, on just sort of yelling at the, at the storm clouds on this bucking ship. Ah! Storms crashing and raging. You see, uh, you see Elizabeth trying to stay afloat, but slowly failing. Chucky's like, that solved a lot of problems. <laughs> He just put his hand on, on Hank's shoulder. Yeah. I, I, honestly, it solved a lot of problems. Jeez. Uh, all right. Well. All right. So now we enter the aftermath. Now we roll all the so dice. You take, you take all your dice that you have and you roll them all together, kind of like we did with the tilt. I have a white high nine. So nothing to crow about. Not better, but not way worse either. Maybe the car's wrecked or your wife is leaving you or there's a court date, but compared to some of the other people you know, eh. All right. I got uh, a negative result of nine, in fact, a negative nine, which is also nothing to write home about. Back to where you started, maybe sore and broke, just like yesterday and tomorrow. You probably learned something, though, like how to do it right next time. Hmm. Next time. And I got zero, which is the same on both black and white. And it's uh, the worst thing in the universe. This probably doesn't include death, since death would be way better than whatever it is. Uh, be creative and don't settle for the worst thing that comes to mind. There's something darker, more awful, and more wretched in there somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> that has to be. All right. So uh, now using that to sort of inform, now that we know what our sort of ultimate ending is, we're going to tell a series of montages using our dice that we have left. So I'll start with a positive little scene. We're stepping off of the ferry in Staten Island. Whew, and I breathe a sigh of relief and man, I go, man, I have not ever worn shoes this shiny. <laughs> <laughs> My first montage scene is me uh, basically saying my goodbyes to Shocky Mash, uh, saying sort of uh, emotional, uh, I'm never seeing you again. Uh, everything that went down was so fucked up and I have to leave town because I'm wanted by the police. Uh, and if you were smart, you would leave too. And I'll never forget what happened and I'll always be crushed by it, like humbled by it. And so he basically like breaks it off with Shockey and uh, it leaves town, it leaves New York. Okay, so my first uh, positive scene is that you see um, the ferry pull off, but you do see some police boats pull up and drag uh, an unconscious Lizzie from the from the sea. As he watches Hank walk off towards the sunset of Staten Island, <laughs> he's still over by the ferry. And uh, he sees that the boat's about to go back to the city. He takes off the captain's hat and the shiny shoes and tussles his hair, sees a bum sleeping over by the side of the ferry uh, entryway and trades him the jacket for his jacket and the shoes for the newspapers he's using to keep warm, goes and gets on the ferry back to the city. He has to. He looks longingly back at those shiny shoes <laughs> those and, shiny and shoes looks further back so to the horizon where Hank is no longer visible. Hank is successfully able to move to Florida, sets up shop uh, in Miami working at a small bank. Um, he's able to rent a very small bungalow on the beach, and it's actually really nice. You see um, you see Lizzie in a hospital in New York. She, she's awake, and a doctor, uh, you, you see a doctor trying to get her to, to move her, her body a little, and she just moans, uh, but she, she does blink a few times. That's positive. <laughs> <laughs> I'm down at the Wobbly Hall, uh, down at Hadley, and uh, you know I just just uh, had me some some soup and some stew with the other bums, and uh, you know I've been laying low, but I get uh, slapped on the shoulder by a machine man who's down on his luck, and he's like, "How are you doing, Shalky?" And I'm like, "Oh, doing all right, huh?" And that's it, it's big smiles. 
Hank is hor- horrifically mentally scarred. He's unable to have uh, another uh, uh, sort of relationship with a man, uh, even in Miami, where you know it's rocking. It's he is just unable to disentangle uh, the death of his wife uh, or supposed death. He's not even he thinks she's dead with his love for men. And it, it, it's something that just crushes him uh, for you just see over and over him trying to make a connection with someone and not working. Pan in on the upstate New York asylum and you see a doctor saying, yeah, she's all she can do is slobber. She'll never be able to take care of herself, and we don't even know her name. And then you see uh, Elizabeth in a in a wheelchair, strapped in. Bustling city, bright sunny day. Shockey is whistling, walking down the street, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he doesn't quite notice that he's right by the chase. And when he looks up and sees it, he's like, "Oh, I really shouldn't be here." And he kind of steps back off the curb, and. He hears a shout and is pulled back off the curb by uh, by a police officer who has him by the lapel and says, you idiot, you almost got smashed by that car. He looks over and there's a car that just screeched to a halt. And the manager of the bank steps out and goes, what are you doing? You're going to get yourself killed, you idiot. And Shaki goes, oh, you know, sorry, man. Sorry about that. Watch where you're going again. And off Shaki goes into the day. Heinrich goes to prove his patriotism to fight in World War I, going to fight uh, his countrymen, the Germans. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, brutal. (laughs) Brutal. Uh, And he dies in trench warfare, but not before at least making uh, another connection with another soldier who's on the front lines. And that is where his story ends. And you see Elizabeth in bed, and you hear coughing all around her. Uh, nurses say, we don't want to work at this TB ward anymore. Let's get out. Let's just lock them in there. <laughs> uh, and you hear a key click, <laughs> click, click. <laughs> <laughs> Fiasco. <laughs> <laughs> with that, our story ends. We will return again with a new tale to spin to dare to entertain. All right. All Guys, right. good fiasco. All right. Yay. Um, I felt some feelings on that one. <laughs> that was a good one. Uh, I was one of your players, John Holt. You can find me on Twitter at Lord Joho, and you can find me on Snapchat at Not Dead John. Ken, where can people find you? Oh, I'm Ken Breeze, and you can find me on Twitter at, at Berling's Beard, B E R L I N G S Beard, and find me on my blog as well. All right. And Lisa, thanks again for joining us. Yay, Lisa. Yay. <laughs> um, I wanted to just give a shout out to the game that really influenced my play, which is Greenwich Village 1913 Suffrage Labor and the New Woman by Mary Jane Tracy. Awesome. I, I, I use a lot of her stuff. Nice. Cool. And where can people find you? On find Google me Plus? on Google Plus. Google Plus at L I S A R E I N K E, Lisa Ranke. All right. Uh, I'll put links to uh, your recommendation and to our contact information on our website, boardghost.com. And uh, we'll put links to Fiasco and Bully Pulpit Games where you can learn more about the game and get a copy for yourself and play. And you can leave us comments on the website. You can leave us comments on iTunes. You can rate and review on iTunes if you'd like. That would be nice. Yeah, Um, let us know how we're doing. Subscribe. You can attempt to pierce the veil and contact us at Board Ghost World on Twitter. Shout out through the ether if you have desires we can fulfill. Uh, leave those reviews on iTunes. Please take a moment to subscribe so you don't miss out on the latest episodes. We'd like to thank Pat Couples for our theme song and interlude music. You can find more about Pat at patcouples.tumblr.com or on his band's website, hotelsandhighways.com. If you're not alone in the void, share our stories. The more they are consumed, the truer they become. <laughs> a bus stop been waiting for a minute there but has it been forever cause dying don't agree with me no dying don't agree with me